The clone stamp tool in 3D Coat and 3D Coat Textura is very similar to the one you know in Photoshop. Let me demonstrate, but this time I want to work on a high poly sculpt object, which employs the usage of vertex paint, where 3D Coat will store all the paint information on the vertices of the model rather than on a UV map. And the model will be a sculpt object, meaning it is either a high poly surface mesh or a voxel object. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and hit the W key and you can see it's a relatively dense mesh. If you want to apply more texture resolution, you can always apply dynamic subdivision in a given area. And that means you have more vertices to store vertex paint information. With that stated, I'll hit the W key to turn wireframe back off. And I want to clone from this layer, but if you needed, you could clone through all layers. In this case, I just want to leave that unchecked and work on this layer alone. Most of the darker texture is on this layer and then the brighter areas are on the base layer. You can pick which mode you prefer from this list menu. I'll start with translation and hold down the control key in order to pick a reference point. When I begin brushing, the position of that reference point will follow as I brush. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'll begin brushing. I'll undo. Let's look at the next mode. Mirroring and inversion are essentially the same thing, except mirroring will show you the symmetry plane, if you will. And of course, this is a localized plane, so let me pick mirroring. Then I will hold down the control key while left mouse clicking to create a center point. Once I release pressure from my stylus and move my cursor about, you'll notice a green radial symmetry plane. Let's now look at the next mode, and that is inversion. I'll repeat the same process, but this time you'll notice there is no green radial symmetry line. So effectively, it's the same tool without that visual aid. Now let's take a look at the next mode, which is clone sector. It will look almost exactly like inversion, except it allows the user to change the angle at which it clones. I can do that by increasing the number of sectors. Now, all of a sudden, instead of a perfect mirror, it's cloning from a 90 degree angle. If I increase that number to seven, then I will see something like a 45 degree angle. And you can continue adjusting as needed. You could also change the orientation from clockwise to counterclockwise. The next one is symmetrical copy. In order to use this, I need to hit the S key and enable symmetry along the plane that I want it to copy from. As you begin painting, it's going to copy from the opposite side. So if I want to copy from this side over to this side, I would first need to make sure that I select symmetrical copy and then begin painting. The last mode is the most complicated, but it can be very useful in the right situation. Let me go ahead and select copy using brush. I will then see a prompt where 3D code is going to ask me if I want to proceed since topological symmetry is not yet defined. I'll hit OK. And now I'm in the topological symmetry tool. If I have this mode chosen, mark polygons, it will ask me to pick a red face. And let's say I want the symmetry line to be right here instead of in world space. I'll click the red face and then it's going to ask me to select the blue face. 3D Coat will then create a topological symmetry line right along this edge loop. Now with that done, the only thing I need to do is go back to the clone tool and select copy using brush. I'll make sure I'm on the right layer first. Then I can begin copying from across that new symmetry line.
And that's going to conclude this overview of the clone stamp tool in 3D Coat and 3D Coat Textura. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.